Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to talk to you about data binding and we're going to do some data binding with uh, properties and I'm not going to go into collections, but there are helpers in there to uh, do data bindings with collections. So I'm currently binding text boxes. So I have the text property, of both text boxes bound to each other. And at the moment, if you, if you type into text box one, and once it loses focus, text box two updates. But when you type it in text box two, the text box one updates immediately. So I'm going to show you the syntax here. We can put all of this stuff in the add method, but I have it in a binding object beforehand just to show you some stuff. So at the moment, the binding source, no, I'm going to call this the um, the data target, which is text box one text, and then the data source is called text box two text. Uh, typically, the data target is going to be referred to as the control something, but it's kind of doesn't really mean much in code. Like for instance, the the update mode for the target is referred to as the con the control update mode, even though both of the binding uh, sides are controls. So I'm just going to call it the target and the other stuff here. So the text box to text, that's the source. Okay, so by default, the data source mode or the data source update mode is set to on validation if you don't specify these parameters here. And that means that when, when you modify the target data, the source is only going to update when the control is validated when you leave focus, when your control loses focus. But we can change that. We can uh, remove, so we're not going to remove any of that, but we're going to go into binding here and we're going to change the um, data. What? Why am I doing that? I was going to change it by property, but then I realized that I can actually just uh, change the, change it right here. So we're going to change this to on property change. So now the control update mode and the data source update mode are both on property changed, meaning that the two-way data binding is pretty well immediate. So either way, it's just going to update when the properties change. Now I can talk to you about the auto convert, which is this Boolean here. It's set to true. It doesn't really matter at the moment. But when we bind to the form, it will matter. So we're going to bind to the form. Well, we're going to set the target uh, target or the data target to the forms size property and the data source to text box one text. Okay, I'm just going to remove the second text box. So let's take a look at that. Um, so as we alter the data target here, the data source updates like it should. It converts. Well, just I probably just calls two string on the object, considering it implements it, and that's how it's doing this. And then we can also do this. We can type in a size here, and it will convert it, or it will parse it to an actual size object, apply it to our form. So, there's lots of probably a lot of work going on there, and I'm pretty appreciative of it. So, basically, when we have this set to false auto convert and I don't know what I just did there I press F4 and it opened up Adaware um, so yeah it, it's going to be able to convert size to string but it's not going to be able to parse this text here that we type into an actual size so that's what auto convert essentially does work for us so if we set this here to on validation which is its default uh, value and we go to size the form which is the data target, it's not going to reflect in the um, in the text box here. Even if we minimize this form and give focus to another form in the application or call the validate method, it's simply not going to uh, validate the form. I've actually tried my best to uh, to get the form to validate, just trying to experiment what, it, what the purpose of it is in the form. Uh, so we got the validated event I don't think there is a purpose. It's just there because the form inherits from control. So you can actually do whatever you want. You can change up the uh, 
the properties dealing with validation, you're really not going to raise this uh, event. So on validation, it's not going to work in this case. It's also not going to work when you're binding to a property of your own in your own class that's not really control and you're expecting a immediate two-way binding. So let's uh, do that right quick. Let's uh, add a class. So we're going to add a class and it's going to be called class one and we're going to add a meth, uh, property in here. So let's do public string and I'm going to call this my string. Okay, and we're going to create an instance of this. Sorry, it's called my it's like class one. All right. And we're just going to bind text box one text to this. So we're going to do text box one text and the data source is going to be class one and the data source member, which is a property is going to be, um, what did I call it again? My string. And we're going to change this to on property changed again. Okay. Now, since this is just a class with a property, I'm just going to make a nice video friendly way of presenting this property to, uh, to you. So this button here is just going to be for setting, setting my string. So we're going to set my string class one, my string is equal to, Hey, and then we're going to create a button to show my string. And I'm just going to show my string in the forms text property. Okay, so we do have, again, text box one text is bound to class one my string. It's actually a bit more expressive sometimes to keep the uh, binding or construct your binding by specifying the parameters directly in the add method just because you can say, well, this is our data target and this is the data source. But with the binding you actually have uh, the target object away from the target data property or whatever you're binding to and it's a bit, a bit less expressive in that manner. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run this and we can adjust the my class property by adjust or by setting the text box one text property and so when I go to show my string you'll see that it's the same as this text box here text box text property but when we set my string it doesn't reflect directly in the um, text box here but you can see it has been set all we need to do is notify the uh, we, have, we actually have to make a way to notify the uh, data target that the property has changed so I'm gonna make this a property with a backing field and we're also going to implement I notify property changed. Okay, so the most elegant way of doing this is to create a um, event method to raise the event because you may want to call this in different properties. So uh, we do projected virtual void on property changed. And we're just going to accept a string, and that would be the property name. So if property change is not equal to null, if it doesn't have any, or if it um, has subscribers, then we're just going to uh, call it or raise it. And we have to construct the appropriate arguments which is property changed event args, it accepts the property name. Okay, I like to keep my uh, my event, whatchamacallits, my event hooks right next to my event methods 
just to keep things grouped. And what was I going to do? Oh yeah, I was going to call on property changed here. So you could do something like this. I noticed that in the um, .NET Framework code, they do this. They'll do if value is equal to my string, then return. Actually, uh, with the text property of the control, it was actually um, referencing the property, which surprised me. I would do something like that. Uh, personally, well, the way I used to do it until I saw that is I used to do uh, if my string is not equal to value, then I would do all the logic. I'd wrap everything in an if statement, and that just makes your it's just unnecessary, really, because. Uh, it's easier to read stuff that's not negated, so equals, anything that's equals is a lot easier to read than not equals, and also you're increasing your block level if you use an if statement often. And uh, it's always good to have a bit of code guard in there. Okay, so I'm going to go back to that one thing. So if it hasn't changed, return, otherwise set the value and raise on property changed and pass in our property name, which is my string. And that will allow us to notify that this property has been changed. And whenever we change this property, it will reflect right away in the text box, text property that we have on our form here. So we're going to set my string. You'll see that the text property has been directly reflect or directly reflects the property. And we no longer need to show it like that and that's it for uh, data bindings I'll see you later